Hello and greetings. In this video, we're going to visit a site of much industrial heritage in Flintshire and see what remains today. Join me at the site of Bettisfield Colliery. The Flintshire Coalfield in North East Wales is one of the smaller British coalfields. It's in the county of Flintshire and extends from the point of Ayr in the north along the Dee estuary through Connors Quay to Kyogurley in the south. A small part extends onto the English Wirral coast at Neston. There are records of trading coal in Flintshire as far back as the 14th and 15th centuries. At the height of coal mining, there were dozens of collieries in Flintshire, many close to the Dee estuary. Many of the smaller collieries only traded for shorter periods and often changed ownership. Today, there are no remaining collieries. The last one, to close, was at Point of Air, also known as Talakra, and that closed in 1996. However, some of the collieries have left scars on the landscape and sometimes scant clues of their history remain. At various times of the 18th century there have been at least 11 coal pits around the village of Bagilt. The largest was here at Bettisfield Colliery. Even today this site has some substantial remains. Bettisfield Colliery opened in the 1870s with two shafts which were sunk to a depth of more than 290 yards or 265 metres. It produced both house coal and steam coal from a working area of some 4,000 acres or 1,600 hectares. At the height of production over 640 men were employed. In the 1920s and early 30s, Bettisfield was badly affected by strikes and the depression which led to the closure of the colliery in 1933 with over 400 jobs being lost. Today, some of the buildings remain, including the lamp room where miners would collect and return their lamps at the start and end of their shift. There's also substantial remains of the winding engine house. The buildings are on private land, which is currently a car scrapyard, and there is absolutely no public access to them. By the way, I do recommend the scrapyard. It's very old school, and the guy who owns it is very knowledgeable and deals very, very fairly. There is, however, public access to surrounding land, so let's take a look. When operating, much of the coal produced here was transported away by sea. The colliery is right beside the D-Bank gutter, which is still used today by several small fishing boats which operate in the Dee estuary. It's also the point at which the Miller Tunnel discharges into the estuary. The Miller Tunnel is a ten mile long mine drain system, not including its branches, and is the longest mine drainage tunnel here in the UK. Here it discharges 23 million gallons of water every single day. An access road and footpaths follow the line of a tramway which once served a wharf at the entrance to the nearby Bagilt Dock. The former colliery spoil heap has been landscaped and is being taken back by nature. It's a popular place with local people. The Wales Coast Path follows the footpath which goes around the edge of the mound. It passes a modern stone circle and resting point along the way. It is worth taking a short stroll to the top of the mound for exhilarating views across the River Dee estuary. The dragon sculpture features a fire basket which is lit for special events and forms part of a chain of beacons along the estuary. The dragon stands guard over a time capsule which is buried below the stone plinth. Of course, the dragon faces England, but did you know that it also faces sunrise on the summer solstice? 
Walking back down the pathway towards the car parking, we find this recent memorial sculpture which commemorates the many mine workers who lost their lives at the colliery. Coal mining has always been an incredibly unsafe op occupation. Although there were no major disasters at Bettisfield, many miners still lost their lives. Whilst researching, I found a list of 70, and that is most likely nowhere near a complete list. Many of the men died in gruesome accidents after becoming trapped by roof falls or being trapped by coal trams and other machinery. Of course, some were injured through their own actions. In March 1893, five youths were prosecuted and fined at Hollywell Police Court. Several youths working at the colliery had been summoned by the colliery manager for riding on ponies underground. One was even seen to be riding at full gallop. This practice was banned due to the danger of riding on a pony when the underground roads were far from high enough. William Thomas Hughes, whose case was very bad, he was fined two pounds with fifteen shillings and sixpence costs. That would be an eye-watering three hundred and fifty pound in today's money. This sundial was unveiled in July 2021 by Lady Hanmer of Bettisfield. She is a descendant of the Hanmer family who opened the colliery originally. The Hanmer family came from Bettisfield, which is a village between Whitchurch and Oswestry. If you'd like to stop off here for yourself, there is some car parking, but be aware there's a very low bridge to pass under. I hope that you've enjoyed watching this video as much as I've enjoyed researching and making it. I'll see you soon. Meanwhile, have a grand tour.